When people think of mirages, they think of seeing something that isn't there. But in Titanic's case, the lookouts failed to see something that clearly was there. So how could a mirage explain a mistake like that? To find out more about these visual phenomena, Tim travels to a place that is the very opposite of Titanic's crime scene, the desert. Tim has come to meet a man who specializes in capturing extraordinary visual phenomena. Author and photographer Ed Derrick chases mirages around the world. The way it'll start, like it did today, is I'll be driving down a road. I'll notice that the conditions are right for a mirage because I'll see them on the road. You'll see the typical sort of water mirage where it looks like there's water. Once you get up to it, it's not. And, and what causes, you know, that sort of shimmering effect? What, what causes that? Most people, when they look through the sky through clear air, they just think, oh, it's clear air. There's nothing there. It's not the case. It's a lens. And how much it will distort or affect the, what the viewer sees of an object can vary depending on atmospheric conditions. To demonstrate how that lens bends light waves to create a mirage, Ed brings in a helicopter. Okay, come toward us at maybe 10 knots at 5 feet AGL if you can, over. Just now, the ground is much warmer than the air above it. This creates a gradient of hot to cold air. And since cold air is denser or heavier than warm air, the two air masses create distinct layers. Those layers act like a lens, bending and distorting our familiar reality. The result is a classic mirage, where objects appear below their actual position. So let's get back to looking at these pictures yeah. now. This is a sequence, this is one of my favorite sequences with mirages. You can see that in the distance, you don't know what that is. It looks like a spaceship coming at you. Yeah. It's a black blob, yeah. and this is on a highway in uh, New Mexico. You have no idea what it is, and slowly it emerges. It still looks like a spaceship right there. Yeah. It's and floating in the air. It's it? floating in the air. It seems to be floating in the air. But then when you get up here, you see it. It's a car with, yeah. with two trucks behind it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? That just shows that your eyes can deceive you so much with this sort of stuff. Well, it's not your eyes that are deceiving you. Your eyes aren't deceiving anything. What it is is the lens of the air between the object and what you're seeing. That's the deception. How is it similar, this hot desert, to the cold environment of the Titanic? The similarities are that there are layers of air that are very different in air density because yep. of the temperature differences. Now, that makes a lot of sense because, for example, when they were collecting the bodies from the Titanic, they actually noted that the air changed from 56 to 32 in half a mile. That's a tremendous difference in air temperature. So you had very different masses of air right next to one another, one on top of the other. And so that would really dramatically bend the light rays. 